But welcome back. So I'm Paulo Shikarian. Uh, this is the Neurosymbolic Channel. And today I'm very happy to present to you some new original research that we will be presenting in March of 2023, in case you're watching this video afterwards, at the AAAI Spring Symposium. Now, the intuition about this research came from all the buzz about ChatGPT. And it has, uh, for the record, you know, very impressive capabilities. However, uh, we wanted to understand its capabilities and limitations on tasks that would involve what we call reasoning. So being able to logically work through a problem. And this is much different than a lot of the demos of ChatGPT that many of us have seen, its ability to generate stories, its ability to combine information together uh, and, and put it in a nice paragraph. This is a little bit more mimicry and we wanted to see, can it do more than mimicry? Can it actually do inference or reasoning? And so that's what our research is about. All right, so let's get started. This is the name of the paper, and we'll put a link to it in the description. So uh, let's take a math word problem as an example here. So we have one number is three times the second. If 20 is added to the smaller number, the result is six times more than the larger. So this is kind of a common thing that you would see uh, given to maybe a high school student who's taken Algebra 2. And working through it, we'll just put the math here. Here's a system of equations that can solve this particular word problem. And you combine them together to get that. Uh, reduce both sides. You have 2x equal 14. And it's really easy to get the solution from there. And this is indeed the correct solution. So let's send this to ChatGPT. And here, you know, typing it in, uh, this is a screenshot from late January of 2023. And so ChatGPT answers, and first it shows the system of equations and actually seems to get that right, which you know, this is no small feat. This is actually a really impressive capability. It translates the text that I entered into actual algebra. And then it combines them and does a step right, but then it proceeds to simplify incorrectly. Because you see here, it says y equals 14. And you may remember from the last side, it should be actually 2y equals 14. And so then it proceeds, and of course, um, it gets the wrong answer because of this mistake. Now, this is just an anecdote, and of course, uh, Twitter has been full of various anecdotes about ChatGPT for a few months now. Um, and while that gives us some insight, it's not really scientific, so we wanted to take a look at a large number of math word problems and see what ChatGPT does with that. And fortunately, this is an active area of study in machine learning to study how a system can respond to a math word problem. And there's some known data sets available. So we did our first experiment in early January of this year. And we used a data set called Draw1K, which are um, actually quite challenging as far as math word problems go um, at the time of uh, the, this writing, the state of the art was getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 60% accuracy in terms of solving these problems. So we wrote a little bot that could send these problems to ChatGPT. There was no available API for public use at the time. And again, this was early January, and that's going to be important in a moment. And as another side note, we included some additional text saying, hey, just give us the final answer. We don't need to see all the work. And the reason we did this at the time is um, if you had ChatGPT show you the work, it added additional latency. And since we were pushing a thousand of these things through, 
we didn't want any kind of timeouts or anything like that. Um, we were already doing it through a bot and not an API. So it was uh, going quite slow. And Chat, uh, OpenAI made improvements to ChatGPT after this experiment that made things faster. But at the time, I think they were just kind of coping with the large volume of users. They had like a million users in the first week. And then it grew to somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 million um, after, uh, I think, about two months or so. So let's see what happened when we did this experiment in early January. And the results are really uh, not that good. Remember, I said the state of the art was about 60%. And here uh, it's doing, even if you count partially correct answers, uh, you're doing about 16%, one six. Because anytime it says there's no solution, which clearly isn't the case, there's solutions to all these problems, or returning an answer and none of it are correct um, happens uh, the vast majority of the time. So, okay, so we finished that and we were actually disappointed because uh, if you read our paper um, and also, you know, a uh, little spoiler alert for the rest of this video, there's actually some other things we really wanted to study about it. And the failure rate was so high, it really made that a little bit difficult. But good news, um, a couple days after we did the experiment, uh, OpenAI announced that, hey, uh, we upgraded ChatGPT and it now has improved mathematical capabilities. And thought, okay, maybe we'll get some better answers. So in mid-February, uh, we put together a new experiment and again, same 1,000 problems. And this was now in February actually mid-February, even though that, that bullet says early. And we also, again, included the additional text to provide only the answer. Now, unfortunately, we got the exact same result. Um, and this was quite disappointing. You know, we were expecting improved capability. And so uh, we were playing around with it a little. Uh, the students who were working on with it were playing around with it a little. And they were noticing that when they told it to give only the answer, it would seem to screw things up a lot easier as opposed to if you didn't add that extra prompt. So um, we thought, okay, we'll do another experiment where we don't add that. But this time we actually used ChatGPT Plus, which was a little faster uh, from our understanding. ChatGPT Plus was more of a, a performance improvement as opposed to a model improvement. And we did experiment three, which was pretty much immediately after experiment two. And again, same math word problems right after experiment two, and we had no additional text this time. So, okay, here are the results. And we see that the results are significantly better than the previous ones. Here, only 20% of the time, it's giving either no solution or nothing correct as opposed to 84% of the time in the previous two trials. And since we're getting a little bit more than half of the answers are being returned correctly with up to another 29% that are at least partially correct, we're now seeing performance much more in line with the state of the art from the scientific literature, which was get, getting around 60% on this data set. So this was really quite good news. But uh, one thing about what we did was we weren't only looking at how often it got it right or wrong. We actually wanted to dig in deeper and understand what about these word problems were causing failure. And fortunately, we had equation templates for each of the thousand math word problems. So we had this ground truth that could give us different dimensions of how these word problems could potentially be difficult for uh, the ChatGPT model. And so this is what we wanted to study. So we examined based on our responses from ChatGPT compared to things like the number of addition and subtraction operations, the number of unknowns, and, and all that kind of stuff within a given word problem. Uh, another thing we did, we won't 
talk about it in this video, but we could, we also thought that, hey, maybe there's a way we can use that information to predict the performance of ChatGPT in an additional uh, machine learning model. And you could think of, uh, you know, as this idea would mature, you could think of someone having maybe a little tool that when you type in your uh, question to chat GPT and it gives you the answer, this little tool also reads your question says, hey, based on your question, we think that the accuracy of chat GPT's answer is such and such. And maybe, you know, there's a reason for that as well. And this is, uh, some people call this performance prediction. Some people call it machine learning introspection. Um, and, you know, we think this is going to be an important direction going forward. So let's look at something that we found that was probably our most interesting result of this sort. So let's look first at the January test. And even though the probability of failure at a base rate was very high at around 84%, um, increasing the number of addition and subtraction operations, so we treat those the same because it's algebra, uh, caused the probability of failure to increase linearly with each additional addition or subtraction operation. And this was a very strong correlation with an R-squared of 0 0.82, and we also see 95% confidence intervals. So once you're at three addition and subtraction operations, it's not just above the base rate for failure. It's significantly above that to where it's a noticeable difference. Um, and same, you know, when you get beyond three as well. And so uh, probably you would guess that February would have something similar because the initial failure rate was the same as the January test. And that is in fact the case. We got roughly the same results um, for the number of addition and subtraction operations increasing difficulty in February compared to January. And then you may wonder, well, does this still hold when you omitted that additional information saying, hey, just show me only the answer and ChatGPT could show its work, which for some reason causes it to be more accurate. Well, even though it's more accurate, the number of addition and subtraction operations still increase the probability of failure. So just notice on this that the y-axis um, is, is scaled a little differently because the baseline uh, probability of failure is only 20% in this third test. But still, when you get up to about three addition or subtraction operations, you're nearly doubling that failure rate already. And it increases further from there um, with even a stronger linear fit, because now we see, I also put the R squared values on this slide, and this uh, held even more. And so why does this happen? Why does ChatGPT do worse? with additional addition and subtraction operations. And, you know, our belief is that um, addition and subtraction operations are really representing multiple steps of inference. You have to take a new step in solving the problem. And since ChatGPT, for the most part, is mimicking and not doing real reasoning or thinking about the problem, it fails when a, uh, it fails more often as there's more required inference steps. And this has been true in all our tests. Uh, we also saw for the third test, uh, a similar result held for multiplication and division operations. Um, I think R squared was somewhere in the mid 80s. So it was, it was still pretty firm. Uh, the others, that wasn't as, as strong of a relationship, but we think that that may have been more due to the fact that the uh, baseline failure probability was just so high. There was not much opportunity to show factors increasing uh, probability of failure above, you know, 84%, which is extremely high. So anyway, uh, we'll wrap up this video. Uh, if you're going to be in San Francisco uh, between March 27th and 29th of 2023, 
you might want to consider attending our talk at AAAI Make, which is a part of the AAAI Spring Symposium. And again, we'll also post a link to this paper in the description. In the paper, you'll see things such as other factors that increase ChatGPT's failure on these problems, um, our results on performance prediction, which you know basically are just enough to show that there's something there. We didn't explore this too in depth, but we did take some of the factors that we showed there be correlations and uh, put them in the machine learning model that could predict performance better than just guessing. And finally, um, you know, the full paper is available, um, you know, so there should be a link in the description. So thanks again for tuning in and uh, uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thanks much.